As we begin today, we acknowledge the history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the land of the indigenous people of this region, the Amtuanag First Nation. We seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations with them as we live, work, and worship upon their traditional territory. We are mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. We light this candle in the sure knowledge that it represents Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Christ, our light. We light this candle as a symbol of the light of Christ. Jesus went to the mountain and was changed. But change is hard for us. You call us, O God, to change our lives. But change is hard for us. You call us, O God, to change our hearts. But change is hard for us. You call us, O God, to change our thinking. But change is hard for us. Open our lives, our hearts, our thinking. Open us, O God, to your loving changes. Our opening hymn is Voices United 509, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Let us pray. God of power and wonder, we are awestruck by the glory of your presence. We rejoice at what we can see. We marvel at what we cannot see. You dazzle us with your brightness. You overshadow us as with a great cloud, loving, protecting, challenging, nurturing. You strengthen and transform us. May we love and serve you in all that we are and do. Glory be to you. Amen. And let us continue with the words Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today is Valentine's Day. I sometimes think that it was a day that was invented by Hallmark and a few other retailers as an excuse to sell cards, flowers, and candy. But it is nevertheless a day when we can say to one another, I love you, without feeling quite so self-conscious. And that is a good thing. Today is also Transfiguration Sunday. Transfiguration, that's a pretty big word and one that we don't use very often. Maybe you're more familiar with the word transformed. Do you know what transformers are? Sure, you've probably seen some of the movies. Transfiguration is a lot like transforming. Something or someone is changed. I have a couple of examples of that. And since it's Valentine's Day, Movies that involve both love and transformation are pretty appropriate. Beauty and the Beast and Shrek. Beauty and the Beast, we find a prince who was changed into a beast because he was cruel. And in Shrek, we find Fiona being transformed from a beautiful princess into an ogress. The thing that transforms transforms both of them is love. The beast falls in love with Belle and Fiona falls in love with Shrek. Although their appearances change, the love that grows inside them is unchanged. Our perceptions of them certainly do change. Let's try and see one another on the inside, not just the outward appearance. Jesus asked us to love one another, and we should try to do that every day, not just on Valentine's Day. Just something to think about. Our hymn is Voices United 296. This is God's wondrous world. Minute for Mission returns this week with a video titled A Fresh Start, Aria's Story. We all know what it's like to need a fresh start, but not all of us have support systems and opportunities in place to help us get the new beginning we need. Aria was in the third year of getting her law degree when she discovered she was pregnant. With limited financial resources and no close family to lean on, she had to take a break from school and go to work. Thanks to support from people like you, her story doesn't end there. Listen to Aria share her story in this video. 
When I was pregnant, um, I was very frantic. I just needed, you know, like a start to settle in. My name is Aria. I am a fourth year undergrad at York University studying law and I have a 17 month old son. I started using the Massey Center um, programs last year when my son was around three to four months. Coming here, I got a lot of help for certain things. I got to, you know, I got to do my citizenship. I got to do my license. I got to, you know, do maternity classes and um, classes where you just learn how to better feed your child, take care of your child, play with your child, how to respond to them. The number one thing that I love about being at Massey, being in a safe, supportive environment. As a young person, I was more thrown into the world, kind of. I never had the start that I would have liked. And that's the reason why I'm studying law. I'm hoping to be of you know, some use as a lawyer to benefit um, young people who went through things that I did. Thank you to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada. We really appreciate your support and your donations. Uh, there's a lot of young parents and children here that definitely benefit from your help. And we would really love for your continuous support in the future. Our first scripture reading today is taken from Exodus, chapter 24, verses 12 to 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are here with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of a mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up to the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Our gospel reading today is taken from Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man 
had risen from the dead. May God bless to our understanding these words from Scripture. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of, wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up, the long delirious burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace, where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind I've trod the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. For those of you who recognize this poem, you will know that it is called High Flight, it was written by pilot officer Gillespie McGee, a member of number 412 squadron of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Pilot officer McGee was killed in action on December 11, 1941. High flight has been adopted as the unofficial anthem of airmen everywhere. I'm using it today because it evokes images which are similar to both the Old and New Testament readings that we just heard. Have you ever had a mountaintop moment? An occasion in your life when you suddenly knew with absolute certainty and crystal clarity that you not only knew something, but you knew your insight was correct? I believe that's how Moses felt when he ascended Mount Sinai to receive the stone tablets, and how Jesus felt when a voice came from the clouds stating, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Moses was given the Ten Commandments, as clear a commitment from God as there could be. He held in his hands the confirmation of God's covenant with the people of Israel. And Jesus standing with God was ratified giving the disciples further proof of the divine nature of their teacher. But this was not their mountaintop moment, for they continued to not understand where they were going or what was in store for them. However, Jesus understood. He knew his destiny, and he came to terms with it. Let's look first at the Exodus reading. Moses instructs Aaron and the other leaders to wait for him, and he climbs into the cloud cover of Mount Sinai. For 40 long days and nights, the Israelites wait. During that time, if you read further on in Exodus, you will know that many of the people of Israel grew weary of waiting for Moses, and they constructed an idol that they could worship in God's stead. Then Moses returns, bringing the stone tablets, and the covenant with God is renewed. I can almost picture Moses shaking his head in frustration and thinking, O ye of little faith, surely the faith of the Israelites could have been a little stronger. Then when we turn to the gospel reading, we find Jesus climbing a high mountain with Peter James and John, arguably three of his closest companions. They see Moses and Elijah, and Peter suggests that they build a shelter for each. Just then, they hear a voice from the clouds stating, this is my son, listen to him. This is reminiscent of Jesus' baptism. When the Holy Spirit came down as John was baptizing Jesus, and a voice from heaven said, This is my son, with whom I am well pleased. The, th the three disciples fall on their faces. They're fearful of the voice, fearful of the unknown. Jesus tells them not to be afraid. And as they rise, they see that his face is shining. And they realize that he has seen God. 
This is by no means the only time that the disciples were afraid during their time with Jesus. In fact, they're almost constantly afraid. They're unsure of what's happening as they travel with Jesus. They're uncertain as to what the future holds. And they are unable, until after Pentecost, to move forward with any kind of confidence at all. However, they are able to keep going, and it is faith that keeps them going. Their faith does falter from time to time, but it's the glue that binds them together and enables them to continue being disciples. You don't have to be on a mountaintop to have one of these moments. You might be on a forest path. You might be in a park. You might be on a beach. Anywhere that you can see and appreciate the wonders of the earth, the sea, and the sky. You could be under a starry sky or listening to the crash of waves on the shore, or you could be walking through a wintry wonderland. These are times when you can appreciate how big God is and how small we are. And despite how small we may feel, we are not insignificant. As was written in the poem Desiderata, you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. If you ever do have a mountaintop moment, this is when I believe faith surfaces. In 1998, a committee was formed in the city of Chatham, comprised of members of the four United Church congregations. Their purpose was to investigate the possibility of forming one single large United Church instead of having four smaller ones. As a colleague from one of the other churches told me at the time, let's come together when we can, instead of waiting to come together because we have to. This seemed prudent to me at the time, and my wife and I were among the representatives from Park Street United Church. This coming together is an idea that might be familiar to some of you in the congregation. I know that there have been some similar discussions in the city of Sarnia as well. My wife and I worked diligently on this larger parish committee for a time until one evening when I was waiting for my wife, my son, and daughter to finish choir practice. I was sitting in the semi-darkness of the sanctuary at Park Street United Church, looking out at the pews, listening to the glorious sounds of the anthem being practiced. I suddenly knew, and certainly knew, that the time had not come for Park Street to close. I became an advocate for the silent majority of members who knew that Park Street still had more to offer, more to offer to the congregation, more to offer to the community. Life continued at Park Street until 2006, when the church amalgamated with St. Andrews. For me, that night was a mountaintop moment, a time when my faith took me to a place where ordinary effort could not. A moment like this can come at any time, anywhere, when we least expect it. And this can be so for all of us. When we feel that we have obstacles that are too difficult to overcome. Problems that are too hard to solve. We need to believe in something. That something is God. When we feel we have burdens too heavy to bear, we find that God is there. He will lighten our load and help us on our path. Faith is the glue that held the disciples together so long ago, and faith is what will carry us over a sea of troubles to a haven of rest. Ralph Milton, the well-known author and scholar, tells of a time that he was on a mission trip to Africa. He was at a refugee camp watching a long line of hungry people gathered to receive a portion 
of what little food was available. His attention was drawn in particular to three young children. The oldest, a girl of perhaps 11, was carefully shepherding two younger children. Milton guessed they were her brother and sister. For a long time, the older girl guided the little ones forward under a blazing and unrelenting sun. When they finally reached the table, food was so scarce that the three children were given only a single banana. The older girl took the fruit, carefully peeled it, and broke it in two, giving half to each of the younger children. As they walked away, and having nothing else to eat, the little girl licked the banana peel. Ralph Milton says, at that moment, in that little girl's face, I saw the face of God. Amen. Our hymn is from More Voices 135, called by Earth and Sky. God has given us all good things, and now we have an opportunity to return a portion of that goodness as we are able. Your offering will now be received. Gracious and loving God, we present these offerings and ask that you use them for the benefit of our church, the benefit of our community, and the benefit of the whole world. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. God of transfiguration, you meet us in the ordinary as well as the extraordinary moments of life. We look for you in the valleys and on the mountaintops, yet we admit that even when we find you, all too often our eyes are blinded to your presence and our ears are deaf to your call. You reach out to us and we do not see you. You reach out to us through the cries 
of the poor and the oppressed, and we do not hear you. You reach out to us, asking us to help the sick and the sick at heart, and we ignore you. Help us to be mindful of those who are most in need. Help us to support our community and our leaders in these pandemic times. We know that there is light ahead, and we pray in the silence of our hearts. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you transform us, making us into a people who care for those who need care, providing hope for those who need hope. Let our hearts not shrink from your touch and set us free to love and to serve. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is Voices United 82, A Light is Gleaming. And now go into the world with transformed and transforming hearts. Search diligently for the face of God in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet find the face of God in you. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you this day and forevermore.